Welcome to Menopause Morph, your time to change. We're here to help you thrive through your menopause, bringing you experts in many fields to help you from perimenopause to menopause and beyond to become the strong, vibrant woman nature intended you to be. Hosted by Pauline McCarthy of the Pearls of Pauline, pearls of wisdom, compassion, and joy. Hello, welcome to this week's Menopause Morph, your time to change. Today I'd like to talk about mood swings. Yes, mood swings. I'm often referred to as the calm lady, the one who gets through all the ups and downs and shit of life. And people often, often say to me, how can you remain so calm? But even I have my off days. And these last few days have been very, very difficult for, not just for me, but for everybody around me. (laughs) Oh my goodness. So I'll let me give you a background. So I've been applying for business grants for my business and they're all in Icelandic, of course. And so it's been very difficult trying to understand the Icelandic Google translating it or trying to get somebody to help me. For example, a friend said she would translate the business plan. I had written this business plan. And so she spent a few days on that. And then it came this morning and I opened it up and I went, this is not right. What has she done? And then before I said anything to her, I looked at what I had sent her and I had sent the wrong document. (laughs) Oh my goodness, I was, to be honest, I was in tears because I really wanted this to be successful and I had done a really silly thing by sending the wrong document. So I said to her, look, just please just forget it. And she said, no, 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 send me the, the real one. And God bless her, she did it in a few hours. Oh. And then we have a house guest staying who has been driving me crazy. Many times I was saying, look, I can't socialise this now. I really need to focus on this. And she went, oh, can I just sit in the same room after you? I don't like to be alone. And I said, OK, as long as you don't disturb me. No, I won't disturb you. I won't disturb you. Five minutes later. Oh, look at this funny cat on Facebook. Oh, Please, I said, do not disturb me. Oh, I'm really sorry. I'm really, I won't disturb you. I won't disturb you. Ten minutes later. Oh, did you hear the news about such and such? Are you talking to me? Oh, sorry, I forgot. I wasn't disturbing you. I meant, meant to just, and this went on and on. In fact, I had to go over to my office and just leave her here. But a couple of times I bit her head off. Not literally, of course, you know, but ah! came out because, and then I had to sit and think, You know, this mental dialogue, it goes on your head. I mean, twice I had her in tears. For me, it was because I I had so much stress on to get this application in by the deadline, which was four o'clock today. And I kept getting disturbed by anybody and everybody. Even when I went over to the office, people were coming there because they saw my van outside the office. I have to learn from this situation and I hope you ladies learn as well. So when I want peace and quiet, I'm going to hide my vehicle around the corner so that people don't know that I'm there. That will work. But anyway, go back to the situation. I was thinking, am I being irrational? Is it something that normally it wouldn't bother me? Or is this person just very annoying? I would annoy anybody. So I think in that situation, the second one was correct. (laughs) That that would annoy anybody, especially if you were on a deadline. But there are other situations where, for example, last night... I was really stressed out and I was trying to get the work done because I I needed to get so much of it done waiting for the translated part to come in the morning. And then my son, my elder son came and he was going into Reykjavik to visit his father. And he just sat in my office and started talking about his plans for life. And inside me, my dialogue was going, I really need to work on this. I really need to work on this. I really need to work on this. Why is he bugging me? Why is he bugging me? And then I thought, this is my son and he's really opening up and... I have tried to speak to him about these things in the last few weeks and we have had quite deep conversations but it's always been initiated by me and this was the very first time he has initiated it himself. So my inner me decided what really is important in life? Is it your family, your friends, your loved ones or is it a business plan? So needless to say the mummy hat came on and I listened to my son and we had a very deep conversation for about an hour or even more. Needless to say, by the time that was finished, I was too exhausted to do anything. But it was well worth it in that my son 
really was able to express himself. And afterwards I thought, why did I bite the head off the lady and succumb to my son and give up the time for him? And of course, he is my son, he's my family, he's my friend, and this lady is um, an acquaintance, let's say. So it wasn't so relevant. I suppose we have to put our priorities. So in that situation, my son had the priority over the business plan or the, or the grant application, and the grant application had priority over this lady. But many times when we have a mood swing, are we in control? We sometimes justify by not being in control. We say, oh no, it's my hormones, I'm not in control. But I think a lot of things that we do in our life, we can control when we realise that we can't control them. If you know what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, the internal dialogue that's going on in your head. If you say, okay, when I begin to notice that I'm being irrational, let me think about it and think, is this situation A where I'm being just grumpy for the sake of being grumpy because I feel a difference in my hormones or my my emotional state due to my hormonal change? Or is it because this person is just a pain in the butt? If it's the second one, they're a pain in the butt and we can't tell them they're being a pain in the butt without biting their head off. So later on, I did learn this because I was having this internal dialogue with myself. So when she was disturbing me or doing something really, uh, let's, what, I'm trying to put, find a nice word for you. <laughs> this lady, she's have, having a lot of difficulties in life and we thought we would be able to help her, but maybe it's too difficult for us. Maybe she needs professional help. But when I realised that I was being unnecessarily nasty, then I started to be more calm and say to her calmly, I know you're lonely and you want to talk to people, but this really is not the time for it. And when I'm finished with my grant application, I'll have more time to spend with you. And then she could cope with that. But then if we go back to the other situation where we're feeling that we've been irrational because of hormonal imbalance or something, if we catch ourselves, even if it's mid-sentence, even if it's afterwards, and say, hmm, is this the correct way to be? Am I happy behaving like this? Or can I change my behaviour? Even if it's mid-sentence, like, why are you doing that? Why am I screaming like this? I don't need to. I say, oh, I'm very sorry. Sorry, I'm fine. I'm under a bit of stress. Please forgive me or please work with me on this. I'm having a difficulty coping with the way you're behaving. And then we can move our viewpoint, change our viewpoint, isn't it? And see things differently. So it's like if somebody else had come into my office at that time of night when I was really trying to work hard just to blah, 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 blah. I would have been maybe quite short with them because by this time I had told myself that even if somebody is disturbing you, you can talk to them politely. But with my son, it was a different situation. But there have been times when my kids or my husband have really pissed me off and I've just let rip and then I've had to go and apologise to them. And I think I've mentioned this in a previous talk that every single time that I shout at my kids or be angry when it's not their fault it's just like uh, maybe I'm under stress or something and then they're say for example I'll just make something up here the insurance say we had a burst pipe and the the insurance company is not wanting to pay for it and but the roof is falling in or something and I'm trying to argue on the phone with this insurance company and the kid comes in and says mum right away right now this minute you know something really obscure then I go, just leave me alone. I'm trying to work with this out with the insurance company. And maybe hurt his feelings. So after I would sort out the insurance company, then I would go to my son's room and knock on the door and say, can I come in? You know, and he's up in there wondering, like, what was she going to shout at me now? I just say, look, the way that I spoke to you then was not correct. And please forgive me. And every single time I have done this to my sons, they have cried. They have cried because they are so grateful that I have apologised. Because when people are are nasty to us, we feel hurt. We feel very hurt. And it is such a relief when the person apologises. And sadly, so many times when we do have mood swings, we feel really bad that we have behaved like that. But just think of the other people that we have hurt. And really, it doesn't take that much to apologise. But it takes courage. And a lot of people, 
why should I apologize? You know, I, you know, it wasn't my fault. I was having hormonal imbalance. But you said the words, you know, this, this expression, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Well, that's just bullshit. Names do hurt people. Words do hurt people. What did he say? The pen is mightier than the sword, but a tongue can really lash people. So we have to really be careful what we see. And of course, there will be days when we are so stressed that we will see really, really nasty things to our loved ones. And maybe nasty things to people that we don't love. (laughs) But we should then apologise. My stepson, he once told me that his whole life changed when somebody said one sentence to him. It's a very private thing, so I won't tell you exactly what it is. But this thing started to eat inside him. This one sentence started to eat inside him. And his whole personality changed. And he started to withdraw and go into himself. And now he lives almost like a hermit. And it's really, really sad. At one point, he came to live with us for one month and I was trying to get him to go to a therapist. And we actually got him to go to a therapist and then his father talked him out of it, which was really sad because now the father, he went to live with the father and the father is saying, oh, he needs therapy. (laughs) I was like, oh, yeah, well, like we did that like seven or eight years ago and you told him not to do it. It just shows you that one sentence can change somebody's life for the worst or for the better. So, okay, okay, you've said the bad thing, but you can go and repair it. It's when we don't go and repair it that these things fester and fester inside people and can really destroy their lives. And really, I've been thinking a lot, relatives of friends of mine have died recently. And every single time somebody dies... Well, that I know of personally, you know, people are dying every second, but it reminds you of the vulnerability of life and how precious life is. It's like <laughs> every single second we live is a second more before we die, isn't it? And do we want to live life miserable or do we want to live life joyously? Do we want to make other people's life miserable or do we want to make other people's lives happy and joyous? And we have that within us. And during the change of life, as we are going through, through our menopause, it can be very difficult for us. And it can be very difficult for those around us. So I want to keep it short and sweet this week. And next week we'll be having a lady talking about meditation, which will really help with our mood swings. She was meant to be on last week, but she became ill and she couldn't do it. And I have a few other people lined up. But it was very difficult because I was doing all the stuff for the grant application. But now most of that is over and I'm beginning to breathe better, relaxing, and hopefully I will not be biting off anybody's head anytime soon. (laughs) I feel like a praying mantis. (laughs) Okay, folks, so if you would like to tell me your story about your menopausal mood swings, or if you have any questions, please send them to pauline at menopausemorph.com. Also, please, if you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher Radio or one of the other podcasting sites, and you're having a good time enjoying the crazy stories that I'm telling you, can you please go and write a review? It's very important. The more reviews we get, the more up on the list it goes and so the the higher it is on the list the more people see it and the more women that can be helped because you know we're all in this together and it just takes a tiny little bit of compassion to help us and get us through the tough times doesn't it so my sisters let's all do this together and i hope to see some reviews this week haven't had any for the last last few weeks so please that would be nice Next week will be the meditation, which will be very lovely. And then we have quite a few lovely ladies lined up in the next month or so. It's going to be very exciting. And until then, ladies, we'll see see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to Menopause Morph, your time to change. 
If you've enjoyed the program, be sure to subscribe to the next one and please leave a rating and review on iTunes to help us spread the message about thriving through the menopause. To get a free ebook, more menopausal resources, and to connect with Pauline, please visit www.menopausemorph.com. <laughs>